Key point one. Everyone has the power to select their mentality. Compared to adults, children have a more positive attitude toward failure. Adults want to achieve every time, while children accept failure. What's the difference between youngsters and the majority of adults? Children think that they may develop intellectual abilities via hard work and dedication. As a result, what most adults perceive to be a failure is a learning opportunity for children. To convert failure into a gift, you'll need to change your attitude first. Is it possible to change one's personality? What are some of the consequences of thinking that can alter your degree of intellect and personality? As you follow this summary, these questions will probably come to mind. Not to worry, as you'll understand better as you listen on. We view the world differently, and what might seem like success to you might be a failure to someone else. These conflicting viewpoints are why it's essential to develop the right mentality. The psychology of success starts with your mindset. If we don't change from doubters to believers, there's nothing we can do that will make us feel fulfilled. An effort is what fires your potential and transforms it into achievement, no matter what it is. This summary reinforces the importance of positive thoughts as a way to change your mindset through relatable examples and experiences. In the following chapters, you'll learn more about how to train your mind to believe in your power. Key point two. A fixed or growth mindset governs every decision you make. Different schools of thought exist on what accounts for human diversity. Some experts think physical characteristics explain the differences. Others believe individuals vary according to their upbringing and education. The IQ test's creator Alfred Binet supports the second definition. He created the test to identify children who were not benefiting from public education and believed that education and how it delivered might directly affect a person's intellect. Dr. Gilbert Gottlieb, a neuroscientist, thinks that neither biology nor upbringing account for individual variations. Instead, they trade words. Genes correctly function when they get environmental input. There are two mindsets: fixed mindset. People with a fixed mentality view their experiences as proof of their ability and value. When faced with failure, they tend to give up. Growth mindset. With the growth mentality, your cognitive level is a starting point, not a destination. The growth mentality sees failure as a learning curve. Your attitude has a significant effect on who you become in life. According to the growth mentality, dedication, drive, desire, and training may release hidden potential. I don't mind losing as long as I see improvement, or I feel I've done as well as I possibly could. Carol asked Dweck. Understanding these two mindsets leads to different ideas, behaviors, and beliefs. A growth mentality allows you to assess your skills accurately. While a fixed mindset offers a misleading picture, to be great, you must learn to recognize your talents and limitations. People with a development mentality are more perseverant and resilient because they don't allow mistakes to define them. The two mindsets manifest in mental and personality traits. You may have a growth mentality in certain aspects of your character, yet a fixed attitude in others. Changing your mindset to achieve your goals and live a fulfilling life is possible. Key point three. Your mindset determines your attitude to failure, challenges, and success. We can consider ability in two ways: a fixed ability that must be proven, and a flexible ability that one may learn. Everyone lives in two worlds. The first is the fixed mentality world, with success defined as being clever or gifted. The other world is about shifting characteristics. Benjamin Barber, a famous sociologist, classified people as learners or non-learners. Those with a fixed mindset fear mistakes, making it difficult to learn from errors. They are non-learners. On the other hand, those who aren't scared of making mistakes learn from their errors. Thus, they become better at what they do. Carol Estwack undertook an experiment and let four-year-olds repeat a simple problem or attempt a tougher one. Those with a growth mentality selected the difficult problem, whereas children with a fixed mindset chose the simple one. A fixed mentality cannot admit flaws, while a development mindset is eager to learn. Individuals with a fixed mentality exhibited attentiveness when we assess their responses, but indifference when given new material. Those with a growth mentality sought knowledge to broaden their horizons. When we subject ourselves to evaluation, we change from being learners to non-learners. A growth mentality thrives on challenges. Patricia Miranda and Mia Hamm are two athletes who excelled in their fields by believing in their ability to develop through hard work, concentration, and a different approach to failure. A development-minded person enjoys a challenge. People with a fixed mentality flourish when confident of success.
As difficulties increase, their interest decreases, and they may ignore them completely. The fixed mentality feels clever while accomplishing tasks others find challenging and competent when it learns something new and can accomplish something it couldn't do before. Mindsets redefine failure. Your attitude will decide whether you confront, cope with, and learn from failure or if it haunts you for the rest of your life. Failure is never easy, but the entrenched mentality doesn't help overcome failure. It implies avoiding responsibilities, working less or harder, cheating, and blaming others for your mistakes. Mindsets and depression go hand in hand. Failures hurt, but they don't define you. Success is possible as long as change and growth are possible. Even though a person's mindset is integral to their personality, we can change it. You are not always in a certain mood. A fixed and growth mindset can coexist. It's also possible to have multiple mindsets. When you get a negative feeling, put yourself in a development mindset and observe how it affects your outlook. Key point four. Individuals with a fixed mentality put in less effort, whereas people with a development attitude strive for more. Some accomplish more than anticipated, while others achieve much less, just because the former know what success requires. According to research by Carol Dweck, the difficulties of junior high resulted in a decrease in student performance. Before junior high, the outcomes of kids with fixed and development mindsets were similar. After the research, the pupils with the stuck mentality went from bad to terrible. Those with a growth mentality improved with time. Experiences can drastically affect your outlook, shaping how you see the world and your place within it. Keep in mind that focusing your efforts on the world can help you become more open-minded as you mature. The fixed mentality group blamed their poor academic performance on their abilities or the instructor's style. On the other hand, the second group prepared for failure by deploying resources in advance. In addition to the low effort syndrome, people with a fixed mindset felt comfortable devoting their talents or resources toward preserving their ego rather than learning or trying again. While the person with the fixed mentality wanted to get through school without putting in too much effort, the person with the growth mindset didn't believe that quitting the assignment midway through the development process made any sense. This is something I know for a fact. You have to work hardest for the things you love most. Carol S. Dweck Character is what will bring you to the top. Even if you have the skills to get there, you'll need a solid foundation to keep you there. Athletes with a development mentality have excelled. They understand what it takes and don't fear to strive for more. They put in their best efforts into learning and developing and find failure and setbacks inspiring. Of course, it's easy to assume that everything is finished once you fail at something. That's not the case. With every failure, there's an opportunity to learn and grow. By embracing those opportunities, you'll always do better. Key Point 5 Your mindset can affect how great you become as an athlete. Many believe that successful people are born with a specific gene that sets them apart. They think people are born successful or with the tools to get what they want. That's not true. They need to work just as hard as anyone else. Their mindset sets them apart. In the sporting world, physical ability isn't comparable to mental ability. Athletes' height and weight are visible. These were the criteria used by boxing experts. Muhammad Ali was no Sonny Liston. He was large, lacked traditional techniques, and couldn't defend blows. He wasn't a natural. Instead, he learned and developed himself over time. He didn't allow setbacks to knock him down. Unlike Liston, Ali leaned on his wits. Ali defeated Liston using just his wits and not his strength, a win that remains a contradiction in boxing history. This incident disproves the physical endowment over the intellectual. Michael Jordan, a diligent athlete who was not a natural at his craft, said success comes from the mind. He implies that mental toughness and heart are stronger than many physical benefits. Time after time, we've seen examples of this. Your attitude can help surmount the limitations imposed by a physical attribute. There was a notion that you couldn't physically train for golf until Tiger Woods came along and won everything there was to win in the golfing world. He put effort into his physical shape, whereas before many assumed it was only about skill and that attempting to increase your strength may result in losing contact with the ball. He showed that not to be the case. People who try to develop themselves beyond their inherent talents are frowned upon in certain societies. The champion's mentality is a mix of character, will, and heart, all of which drive the athlete to train at all times. The desire to succeed motivates the athlete to practice from dawn to dusk. Accepting setbacks and triumphs as part of the path to greatness requires the correct mindset, which everyone can develop over time. 
Key point six. It's natural for parents to want their kids to succeed, but sometimes the messages are misguided. Every speech and action conveys a fixed or growth attitude. These messages affect and mold children. In the 1950s, child training expert Hain Ginat recounted a young boy enthusiastically welcomed into kindergarten by a teacher who understood his needs and addressed his genuine inquiries. At the same time, his mother chastised him as he asked them. He wanted to stay after his mother departed, knowing he wouldn't be judged or labeled. The kind of messages you send to children will determine the type of mindset they develop. Teaching children, students, and athletes the value of effort via process and development is preferable. The act of praising is not wrong, but how we praise is. Reassuring children should convey that you adore them regardless of their performance. It should help them relax rather than increase the stakes. When children fail, we must educate them on how to learn from their mistakes and do what it takes to achieve in the future. Protecting children from failure ultimately harms their self-esteem. Parents with a growth mindset are not people who spoil their kids. Their uniqueness is that they set lofty goals and educate their kids on how to achieve them. While parents want the best for their kids, they must learn to stimulate their curiosity, development, and learning. Parents who instill a fixed mindset in their children ask them to be intelligent and gifted. Anything other than that, and they're deemed to be worthless. Error is not an option, and there's no accommodation for individuality, interests, wants, and values. When pupils don't know how to accomplish something, others do. Some teachers tell pupils that they are fine as they are. They tell kids the facts and offer them tools to bridge the gap. We are entrusted with lives as parents, teachers, and coaches. Children are our heritage. We now know that the growth mentality is critical to achieving our goal and their potential. Rather than labeling mistakes, constructive criticism encourages learning. Instead of inherent talent, concentrate on objectives that help develop skills and knowledge. Lowering academic requirements won't boost student self-esteem. Teaching high standards is a better option. Did you know? According to Carol S. Dweck, students who fail to succeed regularly dread new tasks and become saddened by failures. Conclusion The growth mentality believes in gradual change. It takes time to develop new beliefs. You need to keep growing them until they drastically outnumber the old ones. A development mentality continuously monitors what is going on but doesn't judge oneself or others in this manner. It is sensitive to both good and negative information and its consequences for learning and action. Cognitive therapy promotes realistic and positive thinking. The development mentality empowers you to accept your objectives and ambitions rather than attempting to emulate a great athlete, writer, or genius. Make a growth mindset strategy, envision it, and plan how to execute it. Whether or not you're ready to change, keeping a growth mentality in mind may help you solve issues that a fixed perspective can't. It will help you feel more confident about every opportunity that comes your way in life, and it may ironically attract more opportunities. Thinking influences every element of human existence that each individual possesses. Your mentality impacts your openness to learning. Your effort, your relationships, your degree of performance, and your definitions of failure and success, among other things. Each individual should attempt to adopt a new development mindset to achieve success. This practice will assist you in improving the quality of your life and making you happier and more comfortable in your skin without becoming complacent in your current situation. Try this. Is there a skill or ability you feel you are poor at or don't have? Rather than resigning yourself to fate, decide to have a different attitude by putting in more effort to develop the skill. You will be amazed at the results.